Levine, nice Good pass. Cut. Thaddeus Young with a beautiful Good pass. Good cut. Zach Levine sure knows how to put that orange ball into the hoop. But leading the Chicago Bulls to regular season wins, not so much. Since joining the Bulls during that blockbuster Jimmy Butler mega trade with the Minnesota Timberwolves, Levine's Bulls have basically been in the lower tier of the Eastern Conference. They've been so below mediocre that Chicago has never reached the 30-win plateau with Levine as their star attraction. Levine is a very nice player and he's arguably the most underrated isolation scorer in the NBA. But are the Bulls going anywhere unless they can get another star player in Chicago? The answer to that question is an obvious no. And with the New York Knicks now showing promise and the Bulls still hovering around 500, it might once again be hard for Levine and company to try to entice free agents to sign with Chicago this summer. So, if Arturis and his front office mates can't persuade free agents to play their home games at the United Center, is there really a point in keeping Levine? Once again, Levine is an excellent player to have on your team, but if you're never competing for a top four seed in the Eastern Conference, then what is Levine's true value to the Bulls? In my opinion, Levine creates more harm to the Bulls than good stuff, and this has nothing to do with his game, well, mostly. His defense is still spotty at best, but you can't argue with his current stat line in 2021. Over 27 points per game and shooting over 51% from the field. Former Bulls two-guard Jimmy Butler is obviously a better two-way player than the very athletic Levine, but Levine's shooting numbers can't be ignored. The real issue with Levine's presence on the team is his scoring numbers can't single-handedly carry the Bulls when they aren't getting significant contributions from their second and third best scorers. Why is that the case? Well, Levine isn't necessarily a great distributor of the pumpkin. If we consider all guards, his 5.3 assists per game are barely scratching the top 10 in the NBA. So if he can't pass the ball well, he needs major contributions from his teammates. Don't expect too much. Besides, Levine, none of his teammates are presently in the top 50 for both player efficiency rating or points per game. The problem is because Levine is such a gifted scorer, he can help lead the Bulls to some games they really shouldn't win. This is of course problematic because if the Bulls win too many games, they can't qualify for a top three pick. And until the draft lottery rules change, there just isn't much value in getting the seven or eight seed and losing in the first round of the playoffs. Therefore, the most logical option for Arturis is trying to trade Levine. The other issue is the NBA is part of a salary cap collective bargaining agreement. This just means that the Bulls have to get players in return where the contracts add up. This isn't too problematic though. For example, if the Bulls want to dump Levine, they could easily add Gary Harris's contract from the Denver Nuggets and take a flyer on RJ Hampton. The main prerogative for the front office is Bulls GM Mark Eversley wants unprotected draft picks and Levine off the roster. In essence, a Levine trade means the Bulls are in a full rebuild with the potential for getting a top three pick this upcoming June. So, should the Nuggets trade for Levine? Absolutely. The problem is head coach Mike Malone has to consider if adding a prolific scorer like Levine to the team would create some locker room chaos. In other words, Malone has to determine the pros and cons of keeping Gary Harris versus taking a chance on Levine. Would adding Levine hurt the overall team chemistry? It's hard to definitely say, but probably not. Honestly, the Nuggets probably advanced as far as possible last season with their current roster. A Western Conference Finals appearance is great, but when you have an elite front court player like Jokic on your team, you need to take a chance at competing with the Lakers, Clippers, or even the Jazz. Adding Levine might still not be enough to compete with LeBron James and the Lakers, but it's worth a shot. The good news for Denver is Levine's contract is very similar to Harris, so you basically get an upgrade at shooting guard without having to go into the luxury tax to address the upgrade. It seems like a win-win situation for Denver. What other teams should trade for Levine? The Philadelphia Sixers come to mind as a great fit for going after the Bulls' two guard. The 76ers could trade Danny Green, which would be very appealing to the Bulls since he's on an expiring deal. The easiest way to rebuild is picking up expiring deals and then starting from scratch in free agency. Like Denver, Philadelphia's draft picks aren't that appealing. However, when they're unprotected, there's a chance that the Bulls could pick in the top 15 during the 2022 draft. Levine is a good enough player where Chicago could demand unprotected picks in 2021 and 2022. A 2023 76ers unprotected pick is very unlikely to happen for the Bulls, but anything is possible. Denver and Philadelphia are the two teams who desperately need Levine in order to compete for an NBA title. Denver is especially in need of an isolation player like Levine since they've been such an enigma on the offensive end. If Philly goes after Levine, they're pretty much telling the fan base that they're all in when it comes to competing for an NBA title. 
With their current core of Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris, it's definitely worth a shot. Brooklyn has yet to play unbeatable basketball, but I expect that to change as we get closer to the postseason. However, even with a big three of James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving, the big four of Embiid, Simmons, Harris, Levine might even be better than Brooklyn's humongous three. If Denver and Philly don't pull the trigger on dealing for Levine, expect the Lakers to factor into the Levine sweepstakes. Contavious Caldwell Pope is an excellent role player wing, but he's nowhere the same scoring threat as Levine. The Lakers have young role players that the Bulls would love to have, Alex Caruso and Montrez Harrell. The issue for LA is the Lakers have an excellent closer as is, and the main reason they went after Harrell is to weaken their in-city rival, also known as the Clippers. The defending champions might also not see a lot of value in Levine's game. Remember, the Lakers are the best defensive team in the NBA, something Levine isn't well known for during his tenure in the association. Would acquiring Levine actually make the Lakers a worse defensive unit? In my opinion, Levine's offensive attributes more than make up for his defensive liabilities. Don't sleep on the New York Knicks. They would love to keep winning games and possibly sneak into a five seed for the playoffs. Then again, Madison Square Garden won't have any fans during the playoffs. If anything, MSG would be less than 20% capacity. Is it worth it for James Dolan to trade for Levine and possibly ruin the chemistry they've finally started to get with their good young core? I think that it is, but it might not be for head coach Tom Thibodeau. That being said, the Knicks are certainly making a push for the playoffs. They recently traded for former MVP point card Derrick Rose, and with COVID-19 still very prevalent in American society, making the postseason would be huge for the Knicks. Even without fans in the stands, New York City sports fans would still watch the NBA playoffs, and with Levine on the roster, that gives them an even better chance to advance to the Eastern Conference semifinals. But what do you think? Should the Nuggets, 76ers, Lakers, or Knicks trade for Levine? Make sure to comment below and subscribe to Sports Broadcast Solutions.